working on the master cylinder and proportioning valve today. Uh, I've made a little bracket here to hang the proportioning valve underneath the master cylinder. And I just made that out of this heavy sheet metal from these uh, foam pedestals that I had. So that's just cut out from that and I straightened the, this corner out a little bit to extend that out so I could get a little bit more room for the rear brake here. It's going to have to bend and go down and away. So that ought to give me plenty of room there and here's kind of what, what I've got just mocked up, of course. Um, so this master cylinder is a replacement for the Fox body Mustang. Uh, although the Fox body is, I think, a two-piece with a plastic reservoir and aluminum bottom, this reservoir is larger, and uh, I got that because I don't know exactly my brake needs with this Velar front end and the four or the eight and three-quarter rear end. So uh, I think that sh this should be fine. And then I got a proportioning valve that's front disc brakes, rear drums. So there is a difference. So make sure you get the right ones when you do that. This master cylinder is for a uh, 1985 Lincoln Town Car, uh, five, five liter. There's the part number there if you want to go this route. Uh, guys have swapped this into Mustangs. I think, I'm pretty sure it's because the reservoirs are larger. Uh, maybe when they upgrade to bigger brakes, I, I don't remember. Um, but I, I remember doing a bunch of research and finding this would be the best one for this project. So I've got the, my, the correct fittings that I need. I think this was uh, half inch and seven sixteenths and then they match on these. So this will be front, no, front and rear. Sorry, the rear is the smaller reservoir the back or the front brakes is the larger reservoir if i remember right uh so in conjunction with that i've ordered a fancy flare tool i've been practicing with this thing and it's it's darn near foolproof compared to the little clamp together type this thing uh there's various brands um, I got it off Amazon. I can share the link down below. It's not cheap. I think it was like 160 bucks, but I've got to do a lot of them on this truck. And this is something you can use. I could use for fuel lines or anything else as well. Anything I need a flare for. So I think it's a worthy investment for a tool, especially on a project like this. Uh, this is something I should be able to use forever. It comes with, I think, four die sets quarter inch, three sixteenths, three eighths, and five sixteenths. Sorry, that was out of order. Um, oh, and you can see here, uh, the, yeah, the different sizes. So there is a nicer tool um, that uses a little hydraulic pump ram, and it's about $100, $150 more. That one was nice. It would be nice because you can do the I think it's an ISO or something bubble flare. So you can do like the fuel line, hard line fittings, which I probably could have utilized on this project, but I didn't really like that hydraulic ram setup. It seems slow. This is real fast. You just get your stuff set up here and you're just pulling a lever here to, to make your uh, uh, flares. So I, I think this is, the, I, I'm glad I, I made this choice. Like I said, so far practicing with it, I've been real impressed. It works really well. Uh, what'll be interesting is I've got to make small lines here, which I, I don't think will be too big a deal. I've just got to come out, bend, and go down to that. Um, so that's what I'm going to start out with. I'll make those two. And then, of course, once it's on the truck, got two front here and then the rear and the back. This proportioning valve also takes a special bleeder tool which I ordered with this, but if you're if you're buying one of these, uh, that's something you want to pay attention to. It goes into, I think this fitting here, I, I can't remember. One of these is for like a brake light and the other one's for uh, the bleeder for bleeding the valve and it takes this little, well, I, th I think I have it here, hold on. Uh, this guy right here. So multiple, uh, oops. Multiple vendors sell these. I think they're like ten dollars or something. I got that off of Amazon as well, and that's a PV2 valve, is what those are called. And there's lots of different manufacturers. I just found one that had decent reviews, so that's what I'm using, and hopefully that works out fine. 
Um, time will tell. So I'm going to get to work on the making some lines here. Got my first two lines made and I got them both correct, I think, the first go. Um, main thing to remember is don't forget to put the nuts on the lines, which I you know, heard that several times when watching tutorial videos. Um, the other thing I did is I took a piece of baling wire and made my shape with that and then uh, I actually bent the baling wire with my little bender here this guy here and what I was doing I was just marking on the line where the line touched this this bar here and then as it bent around that way I could use that as a reference point um, for the hard lines which I knew it wasn't going to be perfectly accurate because baling wire is uh, or whatever kind of wire you know just a stiff wire uh, is thinner but it worked just fine I said my the back one I had to change its distance just a little bit so you can see the bends aren't quite as tight because I had to change just a little bit where it goes into the ports. Um, what I don't like though is I, I kind of wish these uh, well, these ports came out on the other side um, just because the engine side's busy and this side I've got so much room but that's that's okay. I think what I'm going to do next maybe I need to look at it some more is I'm thinking about bending these lines a little bit just to give them a little bit more clearance from the engine and that clutch cable and stuff. I've, I also bought a pair of these guys. Um, they're for bending in, in close quarters. So I might, I don't know, they look, they look good and uh, so I kind of hate to do that but not to say that when I bend them Again, it's going to look bad, but we'll see. But that looks fine. I'm, I'm happy with that. And uh, this little guy is just stupid proof. I think. I mean, we'll see. Maybe all the all the fittings will leak when I'm done, and I'll I'll yell at this thing and tell you how stupid it is. But uh, as of right now, that's just man, that's super slick. Fighting, you know. In the past, I fought with the cheap style, with the little clampy deal and the. Uh, I, you know what I'm talking about. If you look for a cheap brake flare tool, that's what you'll see. Uh, this is just a million times better than that. And I can, you know, it's fast. I can make a line and just lickety split and it's just perfect. The flare just looks absolutely perfect on it. So assuming I did that all right, um, it's going to save a lot of time being able to custom fit all these lines rather than measuring them, then going about buying a bunch of hard lines. I've done that in the past and it's annoying um, being able to custom cut the length is going to be really nice so uh, I'm going to start working on running the line to the brakes on the front axle and then uh, go from there I don't have the tabs on the frame for the hoses yet so I'm going to have to fabricate those as well so um, that'll all be part in fact I probably need to do that first so I know where the hard lines go to but these the front axle doesn't have the calipers on it yet um, it didn't have them on this chassis when I got it, but I've got a spare one outside, but it's under a foot of snow. Uh, so we'll see how far I get on, on that. This is what I ended up with so far. I bent that back line, but left the front one straight. Uh, I think that'll be fine. That gives, you know, now my clutch cable's not touching nothing. This is, looks, you know, it's kind of poking out there, but it doesn't hurt nothing. So everything's clearing itself real well. I did have to take these pliers and grind right here where the right where it pinches the pipe. It was kind of wanting to bend the, the indent the tube a little bit. So I just clearance those out with a file. I'm um, just a little bit with, with a 3 16th file. So that seemed to help. There's still a little bit of a bite mark on them in spots, but uh, not enough to hardly notice or hurt anything. So I think that'll be fine. I've made some brackets that'll support the soft hose that comes off the caliper where it connects to the hard line. I went and looked at the the uh, fifth Chrysler 5th Avenue front uh, other front end that I have. So the, the line hits the frame about two inches from the end of this bolt, or two and a half inches rather. So I uh, just mocked it up there and it seemed everything seems to breach okay from where I think the caliper is going to be once it's on, once I get that 
caliper bracket put on here and the caliper and stuff. So I think I, I turned it fully both ways, lock to lock. I think that'll be fine, but I'm just going to leave it spot welded for now until I get that all done because that way I could move it pretty easily if I need to. I'll just make sure and leave a little slack on the hard line once I get over here until I finalize that. As far as the other side goes, I'm working on running the first steel line. So I decided to go all the way back to the firewall before I go down. I just think it'll look a little cleaner and it'll keep this whole area open uh, for any work that I need to do around here rather than just going straight down like most folks do, which is fine. Um, I'm, but I've, I've decided to do that. And I've added a coil. Um, it's always good to have a little loop for vibration and all that. So uh, probably at this length, I, it, it's probably not necessary at all, but uh, it doesn't hurt to put it in there. I just looped. That was kind of tricky to make. I, I was able to do it with just this little bender here. It just took some finagling to get a 90 or, you know, over 90 is easy, but to loop it all the way back around into a 180, uh, that, I don't, there must be a better way to do that, but I got it. I think that looks okay. And then down here, we'll just come across and into that little bracket. Uh, the other side's going to be trickier. Got to go along the frame, around the other side, and all that baloney, so... Uh, I figured I'd do the easy one or the short side first to get a little more practice in before I tackle the other one. I haven't decided exactly which way I'm going to go. This thing's got two cross members. I got one here. I'm kind of thinking the, the original cross member, original transmission cross members where I'll drop this down since it's closest to the firewall. Just drop it down, run it along that, and then shoot it out the other side. So I think that's what I'll do until I get under there and see something I don't like, but I'll give it a try here. The realization last night um, that I made a mistake on this. I guess I was so impressed with my first time bending success that I uh, didn't realize that I put things in the wrong port. So the smaller reservoirs I've mentioned is for rear brakes, larger reservoirs for front brakes, which I knew that. What I wasn't paying attention to is front brake is going to rear brake and vice versa. So uh, I think I did that because these fittings were the same size. These are two different size fittings as are these. So I meant so this fitting met, met, match that one, that one met that one, match that one. So that's how I put together. Then I was doing these other hard lines. I'm like, wait a minute. <clears throat> this is the front brake lines, duh. Shouldn't that be coming from the front cylinder or on the master cylinder or not front as in front, but for the front. And maybe that's where I got turned around to thinking front, front, back, back. But <clears throat> regardless, I'm going to make new lines. They're going to cross like an X or something. I still need to work around this. So this line configuration worked for clearance here, which was nice. So what I'm going to do here is not going to be as nice for clearance. I'm going to have to maybe come out, go over, come around and down or something fancy like that. This one should be easy because I don't need clearance in that area. So uh, <clears throat> back to the drawing board on that one. I knew it was too good to be true, but it's good practice. So I don't mind doing it. You can cut those nuts off and reuse those. I got lots of lines, so um, not not the end of the world. I'm just glad I caught it now until instead of later. Oh, and the other thing I looked up, might as well mention it now in, along the same conversation. Uh, normally, disc brake front rear drum has due to two different size lines that uh, disc brake front lines are 3 16 Normally, rear drum brakes is a quarter inch. Uh, my plan was to do 3 16 all around, so I, I did some uh, internet research and 3 16 all around should be fine. I'm still not 100% sure why they ran quarter to the back. Uh, somebody wants to comment if they really know. Um, because knowing a little bit about fluid dynamics, when you're in a static environment where there's it's there's no flow, uh, it's, like, it's almost like pushing a, a metal rod. It's like a control rod front to back where the, the fluid doesn't leave the system it's not flowing it stays pretty much static you put pressure on one end 
it creates movement on the other end and pressure, but the fluid doesn't flow anywhere. So a static line, I'm probably not explaining this very well. <clears throat> you can research it yourself um, if you want to know more. But uh, that fluid's basically a solid in those lines, for, for a better word. It's not like a garden hose where you put your thumb over it and because uh, that's flowing, this isn't flowing. It's like if you turn the, the, your valve off on your hose, that fluid inside there stays static. That's like the way this is all the time, except uh, on this, you have a plunger pushing one end of that fluid, and then it creates pressure on the other. Then when you let off, the pressure on the other end pushes that, 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 that volume back. It's, it's like a lever not or a rod, or like a... a like a throttle cable, I guess, is, is a good way to describe it. So in that, the side of the line is not critical because the fluid is is filled, the line's filled all the way through. So, um, and lots of guys have ran 3 16th front and rear, so that's what I'm gonna do. If there's something I'm overlooking, I can come back and put a quarter inch line later, not a big deal. I just, uh, I'm not seeing a reason to do that in this. Old lines used to be quarter inch all over. Uh, maybe that was just normal back then. I don't know. But anymore, it's 3 sixteenths is common on newer cars, especially with disc brakes front and rear. Um, but now I could put a quarter-inch line in, and I don't see there'd be any negative effects to it. But I'm not completely understanding why it... Like, I understand... Not to beat this to death, but I know, like, on water line, the farther you run it, you lose pressure um, because of it, it degrades over the length. But that's when discussing flow, not statics. Now, I can put a water line out 100 feet, a half inch water line. When I first turn that on, it's full pressure, but after that, it lessens the pressure as you're losing pressure with that flow coming out. But when you shut that line off, the pressure will be equal to what it is on the other side uh, once the line stops and, and the line builds back pressure, just like an air hose does on the other side of your shop. So. Um, we're talking static, not flow. So anyway, not to talk about too much about something I don't know a lot about. So if you want to know more, do some Googling. Here's what I ended up with after I took those straight lines off. So I made these bends just as absolutely tight as I could with the bender I have um, to get away from that clutch cable and and that was fine. The clutch cable just barely touches it. It's not really even hardly under any tension there. So uh, that's good. I made this one, of course, got a little bit wider. Probably a little wider than I needed to. I was kind of just guessing. I, I used about a flare difference on the bend. But uh, anyway, they don't, it don't hurt nothing that's out there. Clear. Probably don't stick out any about where the old one was. So that'll work. And then I got the... Uh, front lines which i kind of had already done i had to finish the right side to get my 316s line back to do that so i went ahead and got those that one finished up before i did the x on the master cylinder so you can see where that comes down there and then the right side comes down drops inside the frame made sure it's not touching or rubbing nothing uh, added a clamp there goes right in that channel cross member Pops out here on the other side, another clamp up and over, and then I left it a little bit long before I decide to uh, give me a little extra to play with when I get that one tidied up. So, coming along, I said this well, it's good practice, it's almost therapeutic, but maybe that's because everything goes right. I would imagine it's not therapeutic when uh, you forget to put the nuts on and cut it too short and all that stuff so i could see this could be frustrating but i didn't have any issues doing this from scratch so it'll be really interesting once i'm all done to see if the fittings leak or not that's really the true test is whether i got leaks or not but uh flares look good so i'm pretty confident that's not going to be a widespread issue might just be a tightness issue here and there i'm hoping i'm hoping this front end that was in this frame didn't come with the caliper adapters. The caliper brackets actually hold this piece on. So luckily I had that uh, spare front end up in the field outside here. So I went and pulled the calipers and adapters and stuff off and stuck on here. 
Um, I've got new, I've got new caliper, um, and I'm going to order a new rotor. So until the rotor gets in, I'll just leave this old junky one on there. And then once I get those, then I'll finish up my, uh, the front brake lines. Something else I ran into, this isn't the one I had on here, this upper control arm. Um, I'd noticed before that the stud on this side was broke off. So I thought I could just find a shorter lock nut, you know, the kind that doesn't have the nylon on this one here, throw some Loctite on it and be fine. But when I went up to uh, compare some things out of the other suspension, I found that the one here didn't have these washers on it. So um, once I put the washer on there, I really barely had any threads at all to run that nut in because it was, uh, it's this one here. It's just, it got broke off at some point. So, but yeah, it looked like this with no washer on there. And uh, they got to have that washer. It's part of the, how that bushing is not so much held in there, but keeps it compressed evenly. So I went ahead and decided just to take the whole arm off that other suspension I have, which is this one. The bushings were fine. They look a little cracked, but so do these, and these are brand new. They just do that over time once they're compressed. So upper bushings looked fine. The ball joint, I think, is okay, but I'm going to go ahead and replace that. I, I had to order a socket because I don't have um, the funny Chrysler socket. It's like an inch and, I don't know, 90 something 96 something i don't know it's a weird fraction anyway so i've got that ordered so i'll change this ball joint before i put it back together that ball joint's brand new so i might just stick that one in there or order another one they're, they're not expensive um so that's looking good and i went ahead and did the other side as well uh, pulled the washers off that other suspension and put on here even though i didn't have to do much on this side um the the studs are still fine on it um, I just added the washers and then torqued everything down to spec. I think these were 110. Caliper brackets were 90 foot pounds. So, and these here, these are 150 foot pounds. Um, so, I'm making some more progress. Once those other parts come in, then I can actually finish getting all the brake lines connected, which will be nice. So, oh, something else I noticed too, um, there was a bolt missing here, so I went and got another one of those off that other one. And then a bunch of the castle nuts didn't have cotter pins in them. So I'm, I'm kind of, I, I need to go over this entire front end and make sure everything's torqued correctly because I'm finding loose nuts and stuff. I, I don't know if it was hastily reassembled or what, but I'll go over it with a fine tooth comb before I'm all done to make sure everything's tightened correctly. Gonna get the new front shocks installed. These are what I found was most recommended for the front end of these Velars, Valeries, Chrysler's, whatever, Mopar. Uh, the KYB gas adjust shocks. Um, part number, where's the part number out here? There's your part number for that. Uh, they don't come with the the plastic ties that hold them compressed so I've just done this with some zip ties to make them easier to install that way you can get them positioned in there clip that zip tie and it'll expand at that point so if you need a trick to make it a little easier to compress and slide it up in there this works pretty good so I'll get them installed here